So part two of our Louis van Gaal debate. If you missed part one, make sure you go and check that out where we talked about Louis van Gaal's squad management and we spoke about his transfers as well. Now I'm joined by Halson and Webby here in a pub in Manchester. So guys, from here, do you actually think that Louis van Gaal knows his best formation? I know that sounds ridiculous for a manager who's been in charge of a club like United for 18 months, but he started with three at the back. Now we play with this two holding midfielder system, which a lot of people don't agree with. Webby, what are your thoughts on that? Because it is famed for a 4 3 3, so I don't understand why we don't see it. That two defensive midfield players away in Europe at AC Milan, you need a nick a draw on away goal, spot on. West Ham United at home, no thank you. You know what I mean? So he's staying with that, but when I see, I've got nothing against Schneiderlin. But I always remember that Southampton him nicking, nicking a few goals and remember him scoring against us, being pushed right up. So is he stopping the players expressing themselves? I don't need to do this. I heard rumours that someone had spoke to someone in the press saying I'd be a better player if he wasn't the manager. He's holding me back now. I don't know who the player is. Obviously, he's not to say the player is, but is that what's right? Because for me, the players are like, it's like with Carrick this year. He looks nervous on the ball. Carrick was up till last year, the year before, was probably our best player. And he, went, he just looks nervous. And he shouldn't be nervous. He's, how many premierships has he won? How many England caps has he got? So, you know, so I don't know with the manager. I just think the system he's playing, let's not get beat and see if we can nick something. That's, that's my eyes. Alson, two old in midfielders, three at the back. What are, you for? What, what are your opinions? Formation, to me, is largely irrelevant. Whether we play three at the back, two midfield, because football's not that static. It's far more transient than that. Often you'll see fullbacks getting beyond the wingers. Now that's not on any formation sheet that you see, is it? That's, that's instructions. That's what you tell people. We can play with two midfielders sitting deep if one of them gets permission to go. And I don't think that they're getting that permission to go at the moment. So there's times we watch us we just like, just, get, just, just make a run. Just, yeah, yeah, just yeah. run because when, that's the sort of movement we've not had. When someone makes a run like that, you as a centre-half, you go, where's he going? And then you're in two minds about what to do. Memphis's form has dipped since Shaw got injured. I personally think that's because when Memphis stands up a defender, everybody knows he's going inside, but when Shaw runs down, that defender has to go, ah, am I going with the run or the ban? And that split second where he's in two minds, Memphis cuts inside and he was getting a shot off or he was making something productive. That's not happening at the moment. Now, I don't know if that's because we've not had a settled left back or maybe it's the mentality of the guy that's playing at left back that they're not interested in overlapping. It might be orders. It, it could be a multitude of reasons that we don't know, but I would love to see us start getting round the back of teams because our build-up is slow. I, I, I reject that we play defensive football. I really do. I think we just attack in a method that doesn't rely on speed, that doesn't rely on risk as much as we're used to. Is that not defensive football? No, I don't think it is. Well, how, well, go on, how is it defensive when we're holding the ball for three quarters of the game, when our entire team, apart from the goalkeeper, is in their half probing? It's just a lack of movement and a lack of risk. Now, the risk might be inherent in the players. The risk might be orders. We, we don't know. I, I imagine it's orders. It, the web is right. There's people coming out and saying, I feel held back. The players look a little bit held back. Sir Alex Ferguson never did anything along those lines. He would be more likely to say, express yourself, beat a man, and let's see what we can do and get the crowd on their feet. Now, people are putting rose-tinted glasses massively on Fergie. You would think the way some people are reacting to Louis van Gaal that Sir Alex won all 1,500 of his games with only youth players, without spending a penny, players that he brought into the world in his own womb, the way yeah, people go on yeah. about him. But we've got to remember, under Fergie, at times we played 4-5-1. You know what, I completely agree as well. I mean, I, I mentioned it a few weeks ago on an MUSC Daily, that, that under Ferguson in the last three years, at times, we played defensive football. We didn't play a, a fast attacking football. Barcelona even, away in 2008, we did a job on them. Yeah, even Rio Ferdinand has come out recently and said that, you know, we did play defensive football at times. So I completely agree with that. Webby, um, I'm guessing you disagree and you think that this style is too negative. Um, so do you think that it is the formation or do you think it's something that the manager is actually telling the players? Is he telling them, don't risk, don't be risky? I do, don't I, do, risk I, do, I do think that's the element, but like what Steve said before, Everton away, it was unbelievable. The football we played that day and five or six wouldn't have flattered us that day. How much of that do you think was down to us imposing our will though and what happened with Howard Kendall? Yeah, but as I'm going to the match, I'm thinking, Christ, do these scouts need anything to put themselves up? Yep. They're always up for us. 
We'd not won there for three or four years, had we previous. This is a spur they need in their fans. But it was a blip for them and it was a blip for us. It was, but we absolutely destroyed them I and it yep. shocked me. Everton was a full strength team. They had no, everyone had come back. I think the only one who didn't play was Baines. Mm. Stones was back, one and all the rest of them played. And I, and I said to myself, I'll take a point here today. But that was the same formation we've played for the yeah. whole season. But what, Very similar personnel, so... It, it was, it was virtually... But then you're like, Rooney had a good game that day and he doesn't normally do anything against that, Everton. That's a blip. Uh, <laughs> I don't know, he's got to be the manager, he's got to be on. I just want a free United. I don't want them to attack, attack, attack like all these shots. Just do it at the right time. Mm. Look for space. We're not getting no runners. You can remember, like, usually always coming deep and Scolzi bombing on past the centre foot. We're getting on in that now. There is a complete lack of movement. Occasionally yeah. you'll see Matter drifting over to yeah. the centre and to the left. But I think Martial takes up a lot, very similar positions to Memphis. When I saw him up front the other day against Wolfsburg, he, they were basically stood next to each other. Yeah. And you think, why don't you try coming in from the right hand side of the goal? I know he likes to open his hips up and put it in like his finish. He likes to put it in that opposite corner. But maybe Memphis needs to just jib over. I don't know if the players have got the confidence in themselves to just bugger off out of position and, scared, and just and do something. Are scared of doing something wrong? Yeah. I maybe mean, they've got to be in a position yeah. for when we do lose the ball to get yeah. back. I, I don't know. It's also important to remember, I know this is a completely different side with none of the original players, but United aren't traditionally slow starters. I mean, I feel like if we were under Ferguson and this, this type of football was happening, a lot of us would be saying, oh, it's rubbish this year, isn't it? But we'll, we'll be all right. After Christmas, it'll be OK. Maybe. So, you know, I sort of feel like that, you know, last season we saw a game, the game against Tottenham, against City, against Liverpool towards yeah. the end of last season. We were absolutely brilliant. Yeah. And I still we can have, see We us. have had games where we've stepped it up and just obliterated teams where it wouldn't have mattered who we played, we'd yeah. have got the same result. I still can see us going on a run like that. Didn't, well, it start, it starts Saturday, who you got now, you've got... You got Bournemouth, then you got Norwich, then it's Stoke away in it, and then Chelsea at home. You four, got four winnable games. Four winnable games well, could put us top. Them, That's the thing. Well, though. without the, with all the injuries, you would say no. But who who knows? We might have some surprises. I mean, there's more youth players being named on the bench, which is fantastic. We might see Marcus Rashford come in and have the start James Wilson had a couple of seasons ago. We we just don't know the players that we've got in our academy. <coughs> I have got. Massive I was, expectations. I was going to say though, do you really think they're good enough yet? Really? The same you're thing old, was. If you're old enough, you're good enough. The same thing was said in the early yeah. 90s, yeah. mate. And look what happened. Yeah. I think that the current crop of academy that we've got is probably at the age that they're at now better than what the class of '92 was at that age. I just think the bar's a lot okay, higher. Yeah, yeah. Well, the bar's a lot higher in the Premier League. You had players like Warren Barton playing in the Premier League back in them days. He's not even going to get a sniff for Salford City at the moment. So. I think the bar's a lot higher and it's, it's harder for them young players to break in when they've got the opportunity, they're coming in, they're taking them. How good do they look? Have we had anyone that's come through in, in recent months that doesn't look fantastic? We haven't. We, everybody that's coming through, Borthwick Jackson, unbelievable game the other night. Varela, he's not really a youngster, he's 22, but great debut. You know, the, the, they the did, players they did really that were well coming in. They did. Jesse Lingard, you put your faith in... I've loved Jesse Lingard for years. I love how direct he is. He's like a budget Ronaldo. That's <laughs> what I think he is. He's, he's, he's direct, he's pacey and he's fearless. And you've seen with some of the games he's had this year that he's going for it. But we can't put our, we can't put our faith and our season into him. But we can bring them in and, and let them have good games. But it's, it's up to Schweinsteigers and Carricks and Rooney's to take the pressure off them and, and let them be free a little bit, I think. So, Webby, if we were to do as you said then and win our next few games and, and somehow go top of the league, would you still be so negative about Louis van Gaal? If this, if this type of football continues, but we're top of the league... What would your opinion be on him? I'd, st I'd still be disappointed because I've, I've been lucky to watch, obviously, the Dross under Sexton and Atkinson and the, the Dross at the start of Fergie and then seeing great, great teams at United, what he built, getting me on the edge of my seat. That's what I want. I want to be on the edge of my seat. I want to go into Old Trafford and be entertained for 90 minutes. Obviously, it's not going to happen every game. You don't expect every game, but we've got to get back to the United way, which we all know. Attacking teams, you know what I mean? Destroying teams. Do you see, I used to remember what a commentator said, was it a match once? Uh, and he said the team up 3 0 down coming out of the tunnel already. They bought, they didn't even toss the coin. That's how fearless it was coming to mm. Old Trafford. And then it's just, that's just gone for me now. You know what I mean? Because let's have it right, West Ham should have been free up at half time. And we couldn't have had anything about it. The, 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 the gayer save, the hit the post, the, the ricocheted. But we've got to be destroying teams. We've got to make Old Trafford. And teams fear Man United again, which I don't think they're doing at the moment. I'm just saying, like, 
like the Watford game, put it through. That was United how it should have been. They get an equaliser, we go up the field and win yeah, the game. Yeah, yeah. That's what we should be doing, like the PSV game. The, the crowd at Old Trafford doesn't help. You know what I mean? There's people out there for the jollies and I'm checking my mate and all that and I've seen someone on Twitter the other day posting a picture of the Christmas ticket for Norwich. Get in there and get behind the team. Should make Old Trafford a right noisy place, which mm. it's not been for years and some of my mates won't go anymore because of that. They'll just go to away games. Now, what can you put that on? I don't know. Put it on the manager, put it on the prices, but you've got we've got to start attacking teams and free United and then it'll all come good. Um, do you think we can do that under Louis van Gaal? I mean, what is the short term plan for, the, say, the next six months? What does he actually have to do to win you over? Just free United. Yeah. Just play with a couple of wingers. Let's attack teams. Let's get two bodies up front. Let's get this. Let's get a midfielder just in the back four and push like Scholes used to do. Nicky Butt, Scholes, Keed, Nicky Butt. That's how we should be. We don't need two defensive mid players. Not at home in the, in the league against anybody. When Louis van Gaal joined, obviously after the awful season that we had under David Moyes, I did say that my personal minimum expectation of him was top four the first year, which he's done. Mm -hmm. Second season, challenging for the title. Third season, winning the title or a Champions League, that sort of thing. So for me, the only way that I would say I think we need someone else in. Is if we were nowhere near the title. If we were third, if we were fourth, if you know, and, and a few points off as well, then maybe I'd be inclined to agree that it's time for someone else. But we're on that what, track. What, at the moment. That's what I'm saying. We are we, on we that are, track at the minute. So it's it doesn't complain. feel like it, but we are challenging for the title this How, year. Yeah, but however. Wivel's going out of the Champions League, let's face it, embarrassingly early. It's a disgrace to go out in the group stage, I don't care what anyone says. Um, surely now that should give us more of a reason to, or give Louis van Gaal less excuse. He has to win something this year. I don't say, think you can say less excuse because I think the stats prove competing in the Europa League affects your league form. Well, do you, do you not agree the then? Because of switch to Thursdays and Sundays. Do you not agree then that he shouldn't be playing his first team as in the Europa League then? I think he'll be under pressure by the board to play his best team and go as far as he can in it, unfortunately. Because obviously, obviously, we might need to win that to get back in the Champions League. That's a good point. You know what I mean? So I agree with what Webby said earlier in terms of I want to see United attacking, but famously United attacked under Ron Atkinson. And Ron Atkinson... Uh, was it 86 who we went 10 games on the spin yeah. completely wiped the flow of everyone including Liverpool and then we lose a couple of key injuries McGrath yeah. gets injured Robbo Rockford, gets yeah. injured Whiteside gets injured and we, we were nowhere we, we, we completely fall off and Sir Alex Ferguson was brought in very much to be the bad man that gets rid of that culture now mm. I think we've got a hangover of that culture from Sir Alex's days which mm. I think Lou Van Gaal has all but got rid of pretty much the last one he needs to get rid of is Wayne Rooney. And I think that is Louis van Gaal's job, is to come in and cleanse the club and set it up and hand a shiny club over that can compete, that's got talent in it, like Manfist, like Martial, hopefully still David De Gea. And I think it, substance over style. Louis van Gaal is not Ron Atkinson. I think he is more in the Sir Alex Ferguson mode. I think he's going to set the club up. He's not, he's not going to see it through himself because of his age. I think he'll fi finish his three years. I think he'll hand the reins over to... I think it's going to be Giggs, which I'm not sure is the right decision. I think it should really be someone with a bit more experience. I don't know who that is. I, I, whoever inherits this club from Louis van Gaal is going to inherit a different club to the one Louis van Gaal inherits. I definitely agree. Personally, in my opinion, I think if we give him 18 months from here, then the club will be in a better position. He's got a job, hasn't he? He's got a job is. which is, is a three-year job. Give him the three years. What's the worst that can happen? Providing we maintain that Champions League qualification. Exactly, well, that's the only, that's the only that's, that's the only kicker I will put on him. As long as he maintains that Champions League qualification, then let him see his job out. And then at the end of his job, then we can assess him. It's not like Moyes, where we could see the wheels coming off and the guy was actually losing his mind in front of us. It's a completely <laughs> different scenario. This is a guy that's been there, done it, and set these clubs up around the world. Give him his time. He, he's, he's due it, I think. Cheers guys, very good Probably. points. Um, so that has been part two of our Louis van Gaal debate. Uh, make sure you check out part one as well, the link will be above. Uh, get your comments in below as well, give the video a like, give us a subscribe as well. I've been guys, Full Time Devils, Halson, Webby, see you in a bit. I love to see all these kids coming in, but as United, as a club, can we afford to bring a load in? We need to, we need to be in the top three.